Greetings, Python coders. It is I, Alan D. Moore, freshly shorn, still the author of this book, Python GUI Programming with TK Enter, from Pact Publications, available from Amazon or wherever fine books on GUI programming are sold. Tonight's video is part seven of our TK Enter basic series, and is actually part one of a little three part mini series on TTK. What is TTK? We'll get into that in a minute. But first, I want to talk about the off-camera changes I have made to our diary application, which you can see right over there. All right, so the first change I have made, just to make things a little simpler tonight and cut down on the tedious fixing of things, is I have added a frame, a subframe, to put our form on. So previously, everything was just on the root window. I've now created a subframe to hold all of our entry widgets and labels and things like that so that the main root window only has a single frame and a status bar on it. And I've done a little bit of padding around that and a background color change so that um, you guys can see that a little easier and envision it. Um, I've also brought back our save button and the private check button which I removed at the end of the last video because this video is all about widgets and we just need widgets to see widgets. Also, along those lines, I have added in some radio buttons. We haven't talked about radio buttons yet. They are very similar to check buttons, but they're meant to be used in a group where only one item in the group can be selected at a time. So the way we accomplish that is we basically create several radio buttons that all share the same variable and that can be any kind of variable uh, it just depends on what values you want to give to your buttons so as you can see here I've got a little loop where I'm looping through a tuple of strings and for each one I'm giving the text the value so that's the label for each button then I'm setting the value to that string and then of course they're all sharing the same date stamp var and what this is going to allow us to do is select whether we want their message in our diary to be date stamped at the bottom uh, with either just the date or the time or nothing. Alright, so let's run that so you can just see how that looks. Here we go. You can see there's just a little border and I just kind of added that just so you could see what was on the root window. It's not really aesthetically pleasing all that much, but uh, just helps you envision what's going on. So up here we still have our menu, which we talked about last time. We've got our form here in this frame, and then our status bar down at the bottom. Okay, what is TTK? So TTK is a sub-module of TKinter. It comes with Python, with TKinter, and it gives us an alternate set of widgets for TKinter. Um, these widgets are themable. That's what the T stands for. It's themable TK. Um, so that means that we can create our GUI and then apply different themes to it. Now, on each platform, TK Enter comes with different themes for TTK that are suitable for the platform. And by default, they're meant to look native to the platform. So if you are on Mac, um, TTK is going to look like the regular things you see in Mac applications. If you're on Windows, it's going to try to blend in with other applications on Windows. If you're on Linux, it's going to look something. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what they had in mind with the default Linux TTK theme. It kind of looks like Motif, which is a really old and you know crusty tool set that nobody uses anymore. Um, but it is themable, and we can we can do something about that, which we'll do in this series. Um, TTK also offers much deeper and more comprehensive styling options for your widgets, and it offers some widgets that we don't have in regular TK Enter, which are very useful. So let's dig into our code and let's start applying some TTK. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a copy. Of our diary application um, so that we can compare the TTK version with the regular version. So I'm going to just call it diary TTK and I'm going to open it up here. 
Okay, so to use TTK, we have to import it, and it's a sub-module, just like our message box and simple dialog. So we're going to say, from tkinter, import TTK. And now what we can do is go through our application, and wherever there is a TTK equivalent of our tkinter widget, we can just replace that with TTK. For example, our frame. We're going to set our form frame to a TTK frame. Oops. Also our subject frame, not our string bars. Our labels, we'll set to TTK. Our entry, uh, again this frame, this label. Our option menu, there is a TTK option menu. Our check button. our radio buttons, our label frame. There is not a TTK text widget, so you're going to have to leave that as TK. We've got a scroll bar, a button. Let's not forget our status bar. And that is all of our widgets. One last fix. The option menu in TTK is slightly different than the option menu in regular TK Enter. I actually need to specify a default as the third argument, so I'm going to just say categories zero. That's just the option menu, it's just a slightly different call in TTK. So to make this easier, I'm going to go back up to the top. I'm going to change the title here to My Diary TTK. All right, now I'm going to run both. Say Python diary.py and Python diary.ttk.py. Let's go ahead and run these both, and I will pull them apart so we can compare. All right, now if you are on Windows or Mac OS, what you're going to see is a lot different than what I'm seeing here on Linux. Um, this is the regular widgets and this is the one with the TTK widget so let's kind of look through this so labels and frames not, not much different here maybe a little bit different on your system our entries slightly different if you look very closely you can see that it's just a little bit different in the, in the shading um, our option menu the shadows are just a bit more refined on the TTK version, just a little bit slimmer. Uh, the checkbox, you can see it just darkens in on this system. And over here, it's a check mark. Uh, over here, I've got diamonds that darken in. Over here, I've got circles on the regular widgets. Um, the button. Over here is kind of cramped and small on the TTK. It's a little wider, a little bit more padding. Uh, looks a little nicer. I'm going to pause the video real quick and I'm going to get a Windows instance running so you can see how it looks on Windows. All right, so my machine does not like running VirtualBox and OBS at the same time, but I did get a screenshot for you. Um, hopefully you guys can see here. This is on Windows 10, and I've got my applications side by side here. We'll zoom in just a little bit. Uh, and you can see here the regular version looks just like the regular version on Linux, whereas the TTK version looks very different from the TTK version on Linux. Um, the checkboxes are a little different from the regular version. Uh, radio buttons a little fatter, circles a little bigger, buttons bigger, has slightly rounded corners, kind of gray. So these are, are just something that is designed to be more Windows-like. You can see the option menu is very different. It has a little arrow for a drop-down and sort of this kind of weird bar thing. Um, a lot more native, a lot more uh, like you'd see normally on Windows. All right, so that's all fine and good and very easy. Obviously, we can see that there is an improvement, or maybe not an improvement, depending on your platform, to be had from TTK. But 
keep in mind these widgets are themable, so we can change that theme, and we're going to talk about that in another video. For now, we're going to talk about some of the new widgets we also get from TTK. So one of the first ones we get, and it's very simple, is a separator. Um, so right here after category frame, we can add a separator, and it will just be TTK dot separator very simple and we'll make that part of the form frame we can give it an orient and we'll say tk dot horizontal it can be horizontal or vertical using the orient argument Let's take a look at that oh we got to make it sticky so we got to grid it too <laughs> yes it is a widget we do need to grid it so grid and we'll say sticky equals east-west. Let's try that again. And now you can see we've got a horizontal line going right through there. Very good. And that added a row to the grid, so I do need to adjust uh, these guys down. Let's go ahead and do that. There's now on a row three. All right. Useful, maybe not super exciting, but here's one that's a little better. So we have right now the option menu, which is a little weird and looks a little funny. Um, you know, it works, certainly. Uh, TTK offers us another drop-down option, slightly different. It is the combo box. Now, a combo box is not just a drop-down menu. It's a drop-down menu you can actually type into. So it's great for a string entry where you want to provide some options, but also allow for somebody to type in something that's not one of the options. Um, that's going to take a parent argument, a text variable, and we don't do a default there. And then for the values in the dropdown, we just use the values argument. All right, very simple to swap out right there. Let's run it, python diary.ttk.py. And you can see we've got something that looks a little more like a conventional drop-down box here, category. But I can type anything I want in here, right? It doesn't have to be limited to the drop-down. We can, we can have something on, say, alien invasion. All right, subject test. They've landed, and we'll stamp that. All right, save that. Good, so that's the combo box. Very useful little widget. Uh, another one, and the last one we're going to talk about today, is the notebook. So you've probably seen GUIs where you've got tabs, and you can select between different pages using the tabs. Well, that is a notebook widget. So let's integrate one into our application, and we can put our entry on its own tab. That's kind of why I put it on its own form frame, make this a little bit easier. So right up here under our root configuration, we're going to create a notebook, and that is a TTK notebook. And we can configure that by making it part of root. All right, and we will grid that. Notebook, grid. Go ahead and make it sticky all ways around here. Tell you what, I'll just copy this mess and keep the padding with it. All right, now to put our form frame on the notebook, we need to make a couple of changes. First of all, we can remove its grid call because we're not going to be gridding it. We're going to change its parent to notebook. And now to put it on the notebook, we don't use a geometry manager. We use a special function of notebook, notebook.add. And that is 
form frame. And we need to give that some text as a label. We'll just call it diary entry. Save that and we'll run it. Now what you see up here is a little tab and that tab contains this form. Of course it's not real useful if we only have one tab so let's just add another. We'll create, uh, we'll just say dummy frame plus TTK frame notebook and we'll say notebook add dummy frame text equals dummy. No offense frame. You're okay in my book. All right. Here we go. We have our diary entry now. And if we click over here, dummy, we see this empty frame. So that's a notebook. It's something you can use to organize a very complicated um, interface. Obviously, we could have as many of those tabs as we can fit across there. I don't believe there's any practical limit to that. Uh, feel free to test that out. Notebook, it's got a method we can call called enable traversal which I highly recommend that you call because what that does is it enables keyboard traversal of the notebook. So I can use tab and, and alt tab and that to get around through the different notebook tabs. We can also underline one of the letters in the text. So that would be using the underline argument. We give it an index number. Let's run that, and you can see now my D. Maybe for dummy, we'll underline U. There you go. Finally, we can add a sticky value here, since this is kind of like a geometry manager. Uh, if we want to stick our widget to one side of the notebook, now by default it's going to stick to all sides which seems like a sensible thing to me but if for some reason you wanted to stick it all the right side we're going to say sticky equals east and you can see it's all sticking over here to this side of the screen. Not a great choice. Let's get rid of that actually. But it is an option should you choose to do that. All right, that's all I've got in this video. Um, next video, we're going to talk about a really cool widget in TTK called the Tree View. Um, until then, you guys keep coding, keep learning. God bless. Take care.